Welcome to part two of my plan your homeschool year video series. Today we are talking about planning the plan. Planning the plan, what do you mean by that? I have to have a plan for the plan though because you can't just plan your whole homeschool year in one day. And so the plan for the plan is really like a big to-do list. But let me explain. If you can't tell, this video is recorded two separate days because I recorded the video and then I sat on it and began to think there has got to be a better way for me to explain this. And so I am coming back in to fill in some of the gaps. I really wish I could just invite you all over to my house and explain it and let you guys have questions. And so who wants to come over? Who wants to come to my house and I'll show you how to plan? So wouldn't that be awesome? So let me clarify, plan the plan. To me, planning isn't just buying the curriculum. It's how are we going to get the curriculum done? How are we going to execute the year? Buying the curriculum is more like pre-planning to me. It's necessary, we have to do it, but it's not the plan. It doesn't really tell me how we're gonna complete the week or what our days are gonna look like. The things that I need to plan have changed year to year. Like the things that I needed to make my year run smoothly when my oldest was in third grade is different than what I need to run smoothly now that I have a high schooler and elementary students. I mean, it's like I've got two separate schools. So really in this video, besides the pre-planning activities and a little bit about how I choose my curriculum, how I purchase my curriculum, I'm also going to get into, because the curriculum is not my year, there are things that I wanna do that are outside of the curriculum, right? Right? There are always those little ideas. I mean, I watch YouTube just like everybody else or something on social media where I'm like, oh, what a cool idea. I would like to implement that. Those are the things that I might write down in note for next year. I often do not implement them the year that I see them. Can't do it. <laughs> Can't do it. But it can go on the docket for next year. And then when I'm starting to plan through what I want for the year, those are the things not necessarily attached to a curriculum that I don't want to fall through the cracks. So those are the things that I'm thinking through and what we're gonna talk about today. So the very first thing that I do when planning my school year, and you all probably do this too, is I utilize my phone notes app, or you can utilize like Evernote, some place where whenever a random thought pops into my head about what I might wanna do for the upcoming school year, or what I might wanna add, I can just quickly brain dump it into this app. My future school year list is, is, is quite lengthy. But at least it's stored, so when it's time to plan a new school year, that is where I first go for all the ideas to think about what is it that I want out of this school year. The next thing I do, and this is like when I'm actively getting ready to plan a school year. What are my goals for the year? What do I want out of this year? Those goals could be per child. What does this child need to work on? What do we need to work on as a family? What does mama want? What connections do I want to make? What things do I wanna change about my school year? And I need to list out those goals because those goals may impact my curriculum decisions. In fact, very often they do. For example, this past year, my daughter, my middle child was like, nothing's fun. She doesn't wanna do schoolwork. She doesn't wanna do this, she doesn't wanna do that. Specifically with language arts, how can I maybe inspire her to write? What can I do to make language arts more interesting for her? Well, that impacted our curriculum choices. That's why I went with Brave Writer, because the Brave Writer lifestyle, the Brave Writer ideas on how to teach writing is very different from other curriculums. So the goals that you have for each child may impact the curriculums that you choose, the co-ops that you decide to join, the things that you want to add into your school year. So then I'm starting to make a course of study for each kid. It could help you organize all the things that you really want for this year. You don't have to do all of it 
every year. The other thing that will help you do is get in those points of connection, get in the enchantment things, get in the extra enrichment that maybe are not part of a formal curriculum that you would like to do, like the poetry tea time, like maybe some field trips. Maybe you've already got field trip ideas in your mind. Maybe some field trips are more related to art. Maybe some are more related to science. You can dump those all in your course of study, and I'm gonna kind of show you what we did for ours in a bit. So oftentimes I might utilize my planner. Now this is my homeschool planner. I don't always use a homeschool planner. This is the first year in a long time that I have used it. So if you don't use a homeschool planner, I also use my normal life planner for this. But you know, at the beginning of every single month, there is always places for notes. So as I'm researching curriculum, as I'm making decisions about what I might want to purchase, I utilize these notes pages and I will start writing them down. This course, this course, how much does it cost? Again, we are kind of like in the pre-planning stage at this point. If I'm buying curriculum in May, that's usually where I might write down in that notes section what my final decisions are. So I might make a list for each child and say, okay, for math, this is what we're getting. For language arts, this is what we're getting. And so on and so forth to make sure I'm not missing anything. These are going to be my final decisions. And then, I haven't done this every year, but most years what I do is I wait for the sales. <laughs> Almost every curriculum company is going to have some sort of sales, and here's just a little tip for you. I noted in the front of the planner here, special dates part of the planner, almost every planner gives you this month. I wrote down when they had their sale. Just in case it's a yearly thing and they always have sales that same time of the year next year, then when I'm ready to buy next year's curriculum, I will have it noted when the sale was. Another reason I might wait to buy is to see if I change my mind. There was one year, one year and one year only, where I bought all my curriculum from like March to April. I had a YouTube channel and I felt compelled to put out all these videos for you guys saying this is what we're gonna do. And then I went to a homeschool conference and it changed my mind. Um, I talked about it in this video, are you being weighed down by curriculum? Because curriculum shopping is fun but curriculum and especially buying too much curriculum can also make you feel like a big loser when you don't do it. So check out this video for some inspiration about rethinking how we use curriculum. You don't have to use it the way that you think you do and you don't have to buy it in April and May. You can wait and buy it in July if you want to. If you're worried that you're gonna see something better and you might change your mind, don't buy it it's okay to wait. And then the next thing that I'm doing is actually planning out what it is I need to do in order to plan. And this is very cyclical because when I started this whole process, I started with a very simple list. And that list spawned new thoughts which birthed other ideas. That's often how it goes. And I just kind of let myself go with it and dabble with what it is that I wanted for the year and the way that I was organizing it on my computer. It was fairly easy for me to manage all of these ideas that I had. You're constantly gonna be revisiting, okay, do I still wanna do it this way or am I going to wanna change and do it this way? So let me show you what I mean. So I started with Excel spreadsheet because I like Excel because I know how to use Excel, but you could use Trello boards, you could use Microsoft OneNote, you could use Google Sheets. Use whatever you need, whatever is easiest for you to kind of organize all of your things. The reason that I like Excel is because I can have one sheet open that is named one particular tab, for example, my big to-do list. Maybe I'm working on something like my daily schedule for the day. I can create a new tab and start dumping my ideas for my daily schedule. Maybe now I want to think about, well, what is my week gonna look like? I can open a brand new tab and say weekly schedule. I like the tabs for kind of organizing all the thoughts. It's kind of like my digital notebook. So one of my motivations for thinking through all of these things, 
I wanted to do my weekly planning on the go. I found in the past that whenever I sat down to plan, unless I was in this room amongst all of my curriculum where I could see, okay, like opening my science curriculum, for example, seeing, okay, what is it that we're doing? What books might I need? What supplies might I need? Like I constantly needed those things at my fingertips. So I wanted to create like a weekly planning binder so that if I was at a guitar lesson and I could take my homeschool planner in this binder, I could plan the whole week and have everything I needed in order to do that. So that's kind of where I started. So as you can see here in my screen, I, I have multiple tabs. I mean, I have a, a ton of tabs because as I began planning and going through my checklist, I kept creating new tabs. So this is why I love this. I don't even know how many is here. It is not what I started out with, I promise. But the first tab that I started out was this one that I'm showing you, my planning binder tab. So I kind of did a draft of what it, what it was that I actually wanted, what I thought I wanted anyway, to put in this binder. I wanted a year's calendar. I wanted a vision for my homeschool and goals. I wanted a course of study per kid so that I also had it documented for their yearly portfolio. If I needed a portfolio, I could have that here. I wanted our weekly schedule. If I had any loops, like when are we going to the library? When are we doing our family day? Or are we gonna create our own co-op? That was an idea I had. And then I, I needed procedures and lesson plans. Pam Barnhill is the one that kind of introduced me to procedures versus lesson plans. So procedure, if you're studying poetry and you're pulling out a poem, what is it that you're going to do for that poetry study? Because it may not be a curriculum that you're using. It could be part of your morning time. What are the steps that every time you study a poem you're going to do? That would be a procedure. A lesson planning list would be like for the science curriculum. I use the Good and the Beautiful science units. There may be 10 lessons in this particular unit. There may be 15 lessons in this unit. What are the lessons? and then whatever else you may need to note for those lessons. Like, do they require supplies? Do they require additional books? How much prep time before you do the lesson? You know, those sorts of things you may want to note in your lesson plan. Um, I wanted supplies that I needed to purchase per curriculum, supplemental books. Like, these are all the things that you need to take inventory of every year. There's always, once you start prepping a curriculum, you realize, oops, I need a tracing paper, I don't have it, or, or oh, math, I didn't realize I needed a compass and a protractor this year. And then I have a resource section here, so if you were part of a co-op, maybe you're a tutor in the co-op, you need your student lists. If you're part of 4-H, you need forms. Anything physical that you may need to keep track of. Passwords, I did not want in here because that is stored in my planner. Most planners are gonna have a spot for you to keep track of your passwords. And then I was debating about what I'm gonna do with my high school stuff because I have teacher's manuals that I need for when my son hands his stuff in. I needed to keep track of grades because high school is like really official now, right? We need transcripts, therefore we need grades activities that I'm keeping track of, like his work and stuff, things that if he decides to go to college and we need to put this on a resume, these are the things that we need to track. I actually decided after I got into this and saw all the things that I needed to put in this one binder, decided high school is its own separate binder. But this is where I started. So once I had this list, I went to the top. Some of these things are dependent upon if you have your curriculum, but I started with the course of study per kid because I had already kind of started thinking about that. So my course of study, I just created a very simple matrix here. I have all of my kids here at the top, their subjects down here on the side. As you can see, I have a family all, meaning this is including my daughters and my son, what we're gonna do here a family just for the girls because my son does not participate in the good and the beautiful science or some of our history and then i just kind of roughly as i was doing this other books were coming up so i just kind of started inserting in here some of the ideas what i had what i was having and it started refining for me what it was i was going to purchase because at this time 
I hadn't finalized every single decision yet. Like for example, the books that my son was gonna read. Some of the stuff I didn't even end up going with, but I have down here fine arts and other enrichment. I mean, fine arts, I can give my son credit for art. He's in our church choir. I could give him credit for music for doing that. And then other enrichment things I'm doing, those ideas came from Julie Bogart. When, when I purchased the Brave Writer writing curriculum for my middle child, I was introduced to this idea of the Brave Writer lifestyle. And it's intriguing to me. Can you plan for this lifestyle? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So anyway, I added it down here. Other enrichment, poetry tea time, field trips, book club parties, movie days to supplement with learning, game schooling, art and science, with the girls. This P2P is a uh, passport to purity thing that I'm going to be doing with my middle child here. And then, you know, some of the things that I have ideas for Christmas, I just kind of threw them in there. These are like, I'm brain dumping all of these ideas that I have. And that's where I started. Okay, so while I was doing this, I may have already purchased some of the curriculum or I may be waiting on it. Some of our curriculum was just simply to be downloaded. It was going to be a big task. So the next thing to do was to create this massive to-do list. You know what I'm talking about, the to-do list. I've got to print the curriculum. I've got to bind the curriculum. I've got to buy the supplies. I've got to buy notebooks. I've got to buy binders. You know, how is our day going to go? All of these things. This is a massive to-do list to prep for the next school year. How was I going to keep it organized? This list that I created saved me. Every day that I had any time available to do some sort of homeschool planning, I came to my computer, I opened up the list, and I said, what can I do today? And it didn't matter if I had half an hour that day or if I had three hours. There was something on that list that I could do. It just made it easy for me to be productive and it always had something on it that I could tackle. And I didn't have to like sit there and think, okay, where did I leave off from yesterday? What is it that I can do? It was my plan for the plan. So there's two thoughts for this list. Because one of the things that goes into this list is prepping the curriculum. Like I said, do I need to download it? Do I need to purchase it? Do I need to print it? You know, does it require extra, does it require supplies and yada, yada, yada. Extra things that I needed to do like creating a daily schedule, creating a weekly schedule. What sorts of things that I need for my high school binder. If while I was prepping any of this, I had an idea pop into my head that I thought I could implement, it somehow became some sort of task to go on this list for me to address or even just decide, no, I'm not doing that this year. But it had a place to go so that it could get out of my head. Because I cannot stand all the little voices talking to me constantly. <laughs> I am very aware, I am a, a very detailed upfront planner, but let me tell you this too. I'm really good at planning, but once the school year starts, I do not follow the plan to, the, to a T. I just like to have the plan so that if I can't think or I don't know what else to do, I have something to fall back on. I tried to think through everything I could possibly think of to make my life easier during the school year, but you don't have to do every single step that I'm showing you. I hope that you just take something from it and find it valuable. So with that, I created my very, very, very detailed to-do list. I will give you a peek at it. And it did not start out this big either. It started out much smaller, but as I began thinking through things, I began creating a new column. So I'm going to explain this in more detail in my next video, but here it is for now. And there you have it. Super simple, helping me be productive. The next video is all gonna be about prepping the curriculum and how I got stuff into this to-do list. For more information on homeschool planning, check out this playlist and I'll see you next time, bye.